Hey besties, one of my besties reached out to me telling me that they have the option of traveling either via Royal Air Maroc or Qatar and the person wanted me to explain which is better now let me categorically state it clearly that none is better than the other however there are some factors that could guide you so in this video i'm going to be explaining three factors that should guide you in comparing whether you want to travel with royal air maroc or with qatar and to put this in perspective, I'm talking about traveling from Nigeria to the United Kingdom. Now, this video may apply if you're traveling from another African country to the UK, but my focus is on Nigeria. And of course, I am not a travel agent or expert. However, I'm sharing based on my experiences as someone that has traveled quite frequently and just traveled recently from Nigeria to the UK and vice versa. If you're watching me for the first time, my name is Ada and I'm also known as The Legal Pepe. For your relocation, travel and lifestyle content, stay subscribed to my channel. Now, the first metric is costs. Now, the best thing that asked me this question, Royal Air Maroc was 100,000 Naira more expensive than Qatar. So basically, Qatar was cheaper than Royal Air Maroc. Right now, it appears like Qatar is considerably cheaper than Royal Air Maroc because even when I was traveling back to Nigeria and vice versa, Qatar was actually cheaper. So if you're someone that cost is a major issue for and you want the cheapest option, then right now, Qatar might be your best option. Now, bear in mind that this video is filmed in August 2023 and in some months or some years time, things might be different. However, right now, Qatar is considerably cheaper than Royal Air Maroc. Now, the second metric to consider is layover, which is an extremely important metric. For Qatar, there are different layovers depending on the flight you book. You can be lucky and have a short layover, but that is an exception and not the rule. Generally, Qatar has very long layovers. And compared to other airlines where they would provide you with hotel or some form of accommodation, in Qatar, you will not get that. So if your layover is as much as 18 hours, 20 hours, which is a likely occurrence, you are going to be there at the airport for that long. But for Royal Air Maroc, I've noticed that their layover is quite reasonable. In fact, I think Royal Air Maroc has one of the best timelines when it comes to traveling. For instance, when I traveled recently, I realized that Morocco, UK, and Nigeria all have different timelines. So when I traveled, I thought I would be on flight for a certain period of time. But to my greater shock, when they said we had arrived in Nigeria, I did not believe it because it didn't even feel like I had been on a plane for as long as I actually was. And that's because the time got compressed. If you are a frequent flyer, you would understand what I'm saying. So a flight using Morocco, let's assume it's going to be six hours. Because we have different time zones, you would realize that you may have used just four hours and not the full six hours. So using the Royal Air Maroc, not only will the time be compressed, but also they have shorter layovers. They have layovers of like two hours, three hours, which is very short. And for someone like me, I prioritize that over any other thing. The bestie that was asking me this question, the flight for Royal Air Maroc, the layover was about three hours, whilst that of Qatar was about 18 hours. Now for someone like me, using this metric of layover, it's a no-brainer. I'm not going to pay for a flight and be there for 18 hours. I don't care that it is 100,000 Naira cheaper I don't care because what would I be doing for 18 hours? Because it's not like you're going to be leaving the airport. You'll be there. 
of course you can go shopping around the airport you can go sightseeing but 18 hours that's a stretch so when you're considering the metric of layover consider your personality if you are the type of person that is open to sightseeing adventure and you don't mind that long hours then that's fine if you are the type of person that can easily fall asleep anywhere then that's fine for you because no matter how long the layover is you can make the most of that time but if you're the type of person that prioritizes your time your sleep and all of that then i think royal Maroc is a better option now the third and final metric is your comfort so i've done a video where i flew with royal Maroc and i said it clearly that your comfort is not as prioritized as it should be for instance in royal Maroc, at least if you're flying economy class basically what i'm saying applies to economy class just know that there most likely would be no tv and usually in airplanes there's something like a tv but in royal Maroc, there is nothing like that on economy class not only that there is no place for you to charge your phone so if your phone dies or anything like that that's it you can't charge your phone there is nothing like that so once you are on the flight just stay till you arrive at your destination and even at the airport most of the charging ports use a different kind of charger which can impact on how comfortable you feel whilst traveling i have already done a video on royal air maroc and in that video i expressed how you can make yourself as comfortable as possible such as getting a power bank such as getting the kind of charger that can easily access any port also i made it quite clear that the food they served in royal air maroc was not it at all apart from the bread and juice the rice was not rising because <laughs> i don't know what that was so i would not consider royal air maroc as a flight to go for if you are prioritizing comfort don't worry before i finish this video i would explain some categories of people and the flights they should consider being on now if you are a tall person i think when it comes to comfort you may be okay with Royal Air Maroc because you have a lot of leg room when you are seated but when you want to stand up to maybe go pee at the toilet you will see that the eye is quite slim so I think Royal Air Maroc got comfort right when it comes to your sitting position but when it comes to you leaving the airplane they didn't get it right now let's compare it to Qatar. Qatar gives you comfort. When it comes to a space for you to charge your TV, that is good. And their food is also quite decent. So I think Qatar gives you more comfort if you are all about feeling as comfortable as you can be whilst flying now let's explain various categories of people that i think should pick qatar over a maroc or a maroc over qatar if for instance you're traveling with your family no not just family if you're traveling with children or even if it is one child my suggestion is that you should prioritize royal a maroc over qatar except you have short layover now remember that if the layover is much you're not going to deal with just yourself you would also deal with your kids and we all know that kids can be restless when they are in the position for too long so it may be a very stressful journey for you if you have to battle kids screaming for hours so as much as you may have more comfort think about the layover and decide for yourself if it is even worth it so i would suggest that for families especially with kids royal air maroc may be a great option all you need to do is to ensure that you have adequate snacks 
just in case your kids or you don't enjoy the food because you may actually enjoy the food we don't have the same taste buds i didn't enjoy the food but you may or your kids may but just in case they don't have ready snacks also if you are traveling with royal air maroc and you have kids i would advise you to have things like games installed on your phone or movies or something to keep them occupied because you have to create the comfort for them and yourself so obviously it goes without saying that you should have your power bank fully charged so of course it may not be the most comfortable flight but you know that within a certain period of time you would arrive at your destination now for people who are single you are going alone it now depends on your personality and also your budget if you are working on a tight budget and you don't mind the inconveniences that may accrue to a long layover then please use qatar because it may be cheaper and you just get to explore and have fun if you are anything like me use royal air maroc and that's because you are going to maximize your time so any level of discomfort that you experience if at all it is going to be for a short time and because of extra cost you would not elongate your time because for me the way i see this thing time is money like i rather cut short the time i spend doing something if it would give me more time to do other things because for me that 18 hours that i would spend <laughs> at the airport would be enough time for me to get familiar with my environment so that's that i hope i've not forgotten anything i don't think i've forgotten anything but if there is anything you would like me to throw more light on please put it in the comment section also if you've flown with either qatar or royal air maroc please put it in the comment section remember this is not a battle this is not a case of saying one is better than the other no we are just sharing experiences and this is the same way i explained to my bestie that asked that question all of these options and of course it's up to them just the same way it's up to you to decide on which one you would prefer to go with now, if you've enjoyed this video, I've put up a playlist that addresses various content such as this. And I'm going to be seeing you besties in my next one. Until then, stay blessed, remain happy. And if you are en route to the UK, I wish you safe journey and all the best. Bye guys! <laughs>